anything to get a nice even round circle and I drew that with pencil and then you can see a little bit of a haze around here and that was a fixative so it's a workable fixative so I sprayed that and then that will allow the paint to go over the top without the pencil mixing into the paint so I've got my circle and let's get to it so let's go over to the palette here and what I've got here for colors is titanium white raw umber ultramarine blue cerulean blue and then we have cad orange and cad yellow and that will be for the warm tone in the moon and then we also have some quinacridone red i've got a one inch wide flat brush and i've mixed some water into that i'm just going to pick up some white quite a bit of it go back over to the canvas the first thing i want to do is just get a coat of white around the moon. I'm going to pick up some more. Just get a nice white coat of paint over the top. Just enough to where it covers, but we still want to be able to see that outline of the moon. I'm kind of starting to lose it actually, but that'll be all right. I can kind of spread that around with my finger. Okay, so just to coat the moon, get us started. Got some white. Now I'm gonna pick up some more water. And the outer portion of the moon, I'm gonna start mixing in some white. And of course this has more water in it, so it's gonna stay wet just a little bit longer. I get rid of some of that just so I don't lose my outline. Okay. What I'm going to do is take some cerulean blue. I think I might want to take some yellow as well. Just pull that towards the yellow scale just slightly. green scale, I should say. Okay. I'm going to go around the very outer portion of this. Now, as I get into some of that white I just laid down. I'm going to release some of the pressure on my brush. I'll even pick up some more water, pick up some white, just so I can keep that blending real nice right along the moon, the edge of the moon there. That's all right if you go into the moon a bit. That's going to come at a later time. Just want to get a good blend around that moon, first and foremost. So again, take some more water. I'm going to pick up some white right through here. Look how nice that'll blend together. So you can always add a little bit of moisture. And it should soften that paint up for you. And it can vary with conditions. I know I get a lot of questions from people that say they have a hard time blending and they're using the same paints. From my experience painting in the Southeast, I lived in the Southeast portion of the US. I've lived in the North. I've lived down in Colorado. And what I've learned is that each environment causes your paints to react a little bit differently to the amount of moisture you put into it. I'm adding some ultramarine blue. And just the drying time can change. So 
depending on where you live, it can really affect how the paints blend. And so my best advice to compensate for that is just try different things. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't always listen to what I have to say because from what I know and working in different environments and climates is that it changes from, from location to location. So this would probably not be the same amount of moisture that I would use if I was living in North Carolina or Tennessee where I once did. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So we're starting to get kind of a, a neat blend here. I'm going to pick up some more Cerulean Blue and mix in a little bit of Ultramarine just to see how that went. I think I want to stick with the Cerulean Blue. I'm just testing that out. That's going to be too thin. So I'm going to add some more Cerulean Blue here. Had a little bit too much moisture in there. So I'm just mixing some, some of the same colors, just a little bit thicker here. I'm gonna go ahead and get sort of a base coat of this color all the way up to the edge. And then when we get into the area right in here, we'll have to work on that blend. And I'll show you how to do that. And that'll be just a good example of how to blend when things dry and you've got two distinct colors you want to blend together. I can show you how I do that in just a minute. Using up a lot of that cerulean blue. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be the blue that I stick with the entire painting. This is just more or less an underpainting. It gets me one step closer to where I want to be I know that there's going to be a lot of blue, and this is roughly where I want to go with it. And that's all I'm really worried about at this point. Let me get some more. Cerulean blue. And just cover the rest of this. Almost there. Grab the rest of it here. Okay. So now what do we do about that hard line between the two blues? Well, first thing that I would do is I'd take some water and then grab some white. Now I'm going to add a little bit of blue with it. Go right around that, that edge. And just start to fade it together. Now I'm starting to lose some of the paint on the brush. That kind of works to my advantage. 
So it's just a little bit of color, kind of allows those two to blend together. Grab a little more. So that gives us the, the beginning of our blend. Pick up some more white. And just keep working at a few of those spots. So again, this is just an underpainting. This gets us the template to get started. Doesn't have to be perfect, just want it to be close. Go ahead and grab some more white. As I kind of sit back and look at this, I think I probably want some more blue. I'm gonna bring in this portion over on the right. Just bring that in just a little bit. So I'm using a lot of paint, you can notice here. And that first layer, this first layer I'm putting on, I really want that to be quite thick. I want it to cover really well, because that just makes it that much easier for the next layer. It's, it's really tough to put a small amount of paint on your canvas at a time and get a nice even blend. It's good to just get a thick layer on, get it close, and then thin down your layers as you get further and further into the blending process. So this first layer is going on pretty thick. Grab some more white. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. Squeeze off some of the water. I'm going to pick up some more of this white. See if I got enough here. There was a little bit of yellow in that. Just around the edge. Try to soften some of that up. Okay. So I know it's not pretty. But at this point, this gives me the start that I need. I'm gonna let all of this dry and then I'm gonna come back for layer number two and uh, we'll start getting into some more of the fun stage of this painting. Well, I've let this dry and while the cameras are off, I just took some white paint and I tried to redefine this circle I had just to try and keep that intact. I might have to go back over it at a later time, but we know that the, the moon's gonna be right there and that's the, the important part. So let's go over to the palette here. And what I've decided to do is basically darken this painting down. So all this paint should be dry now on the palette. I'm gonna take some cerulean blue like I did before. This time I'm gonna pick up some raw umber and just mix that in. I'm just using an old brush to mix it here. Okay, so I th think that's gonna be close to the color I want. I'm gonna pick my one inch flat brush up again. A Little bit of water, squeeze out some of that water. I'm going to go over to the canvas here and just test that out, see what this is going to do. That's going on pretty transparent. It's not covering very well. Okay, so I think what I want to do, is I'm basically just going to go ahead and take a lot more of this cerulean blue. I'm going to probably just take it all off of here, along with... a 
along with the umber. I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue as well. Now this next layer is going to be a lot better than the first. It's going to make things a lot closer to where we want to be. It's really going to set the tone and the contrast for the painting. But as you can see this going on, it's not covering quite as well. So there's still going to be some work ahead. I basically want this to be a lot darker. I want the whole scene to be much darker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get some more cerulean blue here. It's going to take quite a bit. I'm going to take my umber, mix that in. A little bit of that ultramarine. So this is going on really thick. I really want this to be much darker. And that's just something that I decide along the way. So that first layer of blue was a bit light, but you don't really know until you get it on there. And I like to go, I like to air on the side of, of light rather than going a little bit too dark. I just like to build things up slowly. So you can see a lot of the brush strokes that are showing through, which means it's not covering completely. So it's letting some of that layer underneath shine through, which is all right. Okay, now as I get closer to the moon, we're using up a lot of that paint. So I'm just gonna keep adding it to my palette here. I'm gonna grab some white. Let's start, I'll just continue with this pile right there. So let's grab some white. I'm gonna add the white to the cerulean blue. We're gonna take some umber and mix that in. Want a little more umber. A little more umber and then add some ultramarine blue into that as well. A little more cerulean blue. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'll start with this. Now, it's gonna get a bit tricky because I wanna maintain that circle, but at the same time, I don't wanna slow myself down too much. So I'm gonna to try to be close to that circle, but I'll probably get my, the disc I used to create this circle in the first place and probably redo it, just clean it up at a later time. So I'm just gonna be going around this fairly loosely. I'll fix it later. So this, we might lose our perfect circle. That's what I'm trying to say. I'd rather go on the inside of the circle, make it a little bit smaller than have to go back and fill in. It's a lot easier to fill it in with white than it is to fill in 
and match the color around it. So I'd rather make the moon a bit too small than end up not making it. Or, or end up making it too large. Okay. Ah, that moon is really going to pop now once I get this complete. So I'm going to try to mix a little bit more of that color. So basically this color that's going around the moon is more gray than blue. It just has more of a gray hue to it. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to make the appearance of a glow around the moon. So the glow doesn't have to be orange, even though the, the moon itself is going to have some oranges in it. By having a gray glow around the moon, it's going to appear like an orangish glow because as it sits next to all the deep blues nearby, just gives the appearance in contrast next to all those dark blues of more of an orangish glow. So we don't actually have to add orange. I think that's a common mistake and I've done that certainly in the past. You don't need color, just gray it down for the glow and it's going to appear like a nice warm glow. Okay, so I'm going to go back to some blues here. Pick up that cerulean blue. I'm going to add some ultramarine to that and just kind of mix it into the little bit of gray that I have left here. And I'm going to go ahead and just add some more umber. Ultramarine blue. A little bit of white. I'm going to run out of cerulean blue, so I'm going to add some right to there again. A bit more white. Now, as I add white, I add more blue as well because that white brings it closer to the gray, that neutral scale. So we want to add more color to it. So if you add white, be sure to add a little more color. Okay. There we go. I think that's the tone that I'm looking for. Might even add some yellow to just green this up a bit. I think what's difficult about creating a painting like this is it takes a lot of patience to create that nice glow, that nice soft blend. So it's easy to get frustrated. But once you do it a few times and you begin to understand the process, it becomes a lot easier because you understand that it has to go through an ugly phase. And that's with a lot of paintings that I do. There's always a phase that's not so pretty. And once you understand that that phase is kind of necessary to achieve what you want, and this is especially true with acrylic paints, it be, just becomes a lot easier. So have the patience, keep it moving. Now again, this part is still looking a bit rough, but our color is pretty close to where we want it to be for the end result. So I can begin to visualize where I want this to go, by having the contrast set.
Okay. I'm just gonna make sure a couple of these areas are nice and covered. Now this is the hard part. So we're gonna have to let this dry. More patience. This is just another stage of the painting. This is the process that I often go through. That first part, looking back, was a bit of a mistake because I created it too light. So kind of have to repeat the process again here, redo this whole area, make it darker. Now I can visualize where I want this painting to go and I feel much better about it. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll begin to add more detail. Okay, so this is nice and dry. And the next thing that I think I'm going to do is begin to darken down some of the areas around the corners of the painting. And I want to have some clouds. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to lay them in here, but somewhere in, underneath the, the moon itself. And then I want to work on the glow, just smoothing out and just refining some color. So probably going to start with the darker areas around the corners, especially up top. So let's go to the palette. And I've got my big old flat brush here again. Now this time, I think I'm going to pick up some more ultramarine. I want some cerulean blue in that as well. And then I'm going to pick up the rest of this raw umber. Add some more ultramarine to that. Add a bit of yellow to this as well. Okay, let's just try that for right now. I'll go right over the top. I want to begin to create the effect of like a haze coming through here. So I'm going to go left and right horizontally with my brush strokes this time. And I'm going to get some more umber on the palette. I'm just going to continue to mix up that same color. Moving down to the lower portion here. Okay, I'm going to get some more water. And I'm also going to pick up my rag over here. I dip my fingers in the water, just get some on the palette. So my hands are wet. I go over to the edge here and take my wet hand and just kind of blend that out. This is just help me blend. I'm beginning to think I'm going to go over this with oils near the end. So I don't need that blend to be perfect, but it's just going to help me get a little bit closer.
Okay. I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm basically gonna continue to mix some of these darker blues. So just umber and then both types of blue here. I want to begin to smooth out some of this area as it fades in to the lighter portion. I'm going to add some white. Just a little bit. Got most of that off my brush. Pick up some umber and ultramarine. Test that out. Okay, that's about the same color. I think I need more ultramarine on my palette. This is sort of an in-between, between our highlight, between this gray area and the dark, just something right in the middle to start to help that blend even more. Pick up some more water. And kind of smooth out that edge. I'm going to take some more white, some cerulean blue, and I'm going to add some yellow. Pick up a little water. Okay, now I'm going to go right over the moon with this color. I'm going to fade it right into some of that we, that we've been laying down. So this moon, I want to blend right in to this misty atmospheric sky. Add a little more down here. And I'm just kind of use the bit I have left on my brush to just feather out some of this area up around the top. And I'm just helping that along, that blend. Just enough paint on the brush to add a bit to the canvas. Again, I don't want to have to redo a lot. I'm starting to go right over the top of this moon, so we'll begin to lose the moon itself. But that's looking a lot better. I'm going to let all of this dry again, and in about 15 minutes or so, I'll come back and I'll continue working on some of this mist, some of the blends, and then we'll get into some of the clouds. And I think the moon itself and the texture in the moon will probably come at the end. All right, I'm back. Now, the next thing that I'm thinking about doing is I'd like to darken some of the sky just a little bit more up in the corners, especially. Uh, probably not so much 
down low, but especially up top. And then I want to begin to really refine this blend, work on that, and then uh, move to the moon. So let's go over to the palette. And I finally have my palette camera figured out. I had it on the wrong settings, so bear with me. It's a new camera here. So this should be much better. You should be able to see the water cup and everything a little bit more clearly. So, let's see here. I'm going to get start with this round brush just for some mixing. Now I'm going to get into some of this quinacridone red and I don't think I actually need any white. But I want to create that really dark color. So I'm going to go with some ultramarine blue. I want to go with a little bit of cerulean blue as well. And then I'm going to pick up some raw umber and add a bit of that quinacridone into it. I want this to be a little bit more blue, so I'm going to add some more blue. There. It's going to be pretty dark. Now, I'm going to go back to my larger flat brush here, one inch flat brush. And I'm going to start right up top. Now with this being dry, the method of using some water on my hands is going to work a lot better. And I'm just going to kind of blend this darker color into some of the lights. Might lose some of that horizontal brush stroke line up top. It's just changes that I make up in my mind along the way. Maybe just a little bit as I get close to the moon, but not so much far back here. Okay, so that's much darker. I like that. I'm gonna wash this brush. And I think I'm going to pick up some of these round blender brushes. And as always, the brushes are in the description, so you can check that out below. Okay. I want to start making that smooth transition. So I'm adding both blues and a little bit of white into what I already have here. Touch of yellow. Not very much, though as well as some umber. Okay, now I got this color, I'm gonna go back and just test it. Okay, that's just about perfect. So I'm gonna take some water on this brush, mix it into the paint, and then I'm also going to dip this round blender brush in the water, squeeze out any excess water on this brush. I just want it damp. And I'm gonna to start to go around to areas And you know what? I might even use my fingers for this. Just add some of that color. It matches it quite well. And just kind of blend it together. So this process takes a little while. This is where I always speed it up because it's very, very repetitive. There's no tricks. There's nothing that I'm not showing you now that I'll do in the sped up portion. You just get some paint on there, match the color that's already on there, and blend it as best you can. Sometimes a brush might work better. Sometimes I find that my fingers are the best blending tool. Make sure you keep a rag handy so you can kind of wash your fingers off as you go.
I'll just look for any areas and try to fix some imperfections. This doesn't have to be perfect. I will add some oil paint over the top and that's gonna help. But this is just getting me a little bit closer to where I need to be. Trying to mix up some of that same color. Add some more ultramarine blue. Maybe even some quinacridone. Because I want that blend to start to fade into that dark area. Okay, I'm going to go with a dark, darker tone here. Just add some more blue and umber together. Get some moisture in there and wet my fingers down. This is a little bit darker. I'll just blend it in to that dark area. Okay, let's work on the moon a little bit more. So that blend is only gonna be up top, more or less. I want more of those horizontal lines, like I said, down below here. Pick up a little bit of yellow. Test this color out. A little more cerulean blue. Okay, now I'm going to pick up some more blue. Some more ultramarine. Along with some umber. Okay. So I'm just defining those areas a bit more. Now I'm gonna go a bit darker. Get both kinds of blue. And some umber. Begin to blend those light areas into the darks. Not particularly worried about the moon itself quite yet. Just working on the areas around it. Thank you. 
Okay. Let's do a little bit of work on the moon itself. I'm going to pick up some white. And here's where the orange comes in. Just a touch of orange. And then kind of roll that and maybe some of the blue. So I can barely see that moon underneath some of these colors. So what I'm going to try to do is just lighten that up slightly. Can always make micro adjustments later. So if I screw up the moon itself, I'm not too worried. I just want to keep that outline of the moon but very softly down low. We want that haze to really show up. Get some more white. And I'll just add some yellow and orange to this. So I'm using that round blender brush. I'm gonna add a little bit more color down low just right through here. See how that looks. Now again, if the blend itself isn't very soft, that's quite all right. This is why I like to use oils over the top. Just save me some time and frustration. I'm just kind of rubbing some of this color over the rest of the moon as long as I have it. Okay. Now, I want to work on this blend right through here just a bit more before I go to the oil portion. So I'm going to get some water on my brush. I still have that white. And I'm going to take some blue and umber, kind of mix it into that white. Just test it out real quick here. Okay, that's about right might actually want some yellow into that. So I've got a little bit of paint on the brush and I'm just softly feathering this on. So this is just slightly brighter than what's already on there. I'm just going to start to refine this down.
We could take a little more water, add it to this color, kind of use this color to go right over the moon, sort of start to finish off these horizontal blends across the moon itself. So I'd like to get the blends before I add details like the texture, the craters of the moon. We're still not quite there, but we're getting closer. Remember, if you screw up, you can always paint over it. Okay, so now I got this stark harsh line right through here. If I just add some white, some of this color I mixed before, just blend it right into it. Look how that disappears. So you kind of have to move quickly, but it's very easy to fix mistakes, such as creating a hard line when I want a soft blend. This is a good example of blending with fast drying acrylics. So that moon is becoming better, better, better. Now I want the lightest portion of the moon to be right up in here. And it's going to get kind of darker right through here and then even more dark. But we're really getting close. Okay. Let's take some white and orange and raw umber and just a little bit of blue. That'll sort of neutralize it down slightly. A little bit more ultramarine blue. Add some white back. Okay, let's start with this color. Isn't that neat? Just a slightly darker color. This is kind of a warm, dirty brown color. Just like that, we can add craters to our moon. And I'm using lighter pressure as I get into this area down here because I don't want that to show up quite as dark because we have a haze. Maybe just add a hint of it down here. So we've got a beginning of some moon craters. I'm going to wash the brush. Dry it off. I'm going to take some more white with some yellow. Touch of yellow. I'm going to brighten up just a couple spots. around these craters. Just kind of use my finger to blend some of that out. Soften it up a bit. Okay. Now that is a great start. Add a bit more white to this area right here. Just want to brighten that up. Probably have to work on that some more. But we're getting there. I know you can start to see it.
come together slowly. I'm going to wash the brush, pick up my larger flat brush again. I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of this ultramarine blue, a little bit of the cerulean blue. And I'm going to add quinacridone and number. I'm going to add some more dark up top here. Get some water. Just keep that paint flowing a bit. You can always add water to your hands and then blend out some of the areas you don't like. As long as the layer underneath is dry, which it's getting close. So this is basically just, as you can see, repeating each process over and over. I'm not doing anything new that I was doing 10, 15 minutes ago. It's all the same, but you just do it over and over. Things get smoother and smoother and more defined and more rich and vibrant. Eventually you'll have something you like. But for right now, again, I'm going to step back, let this dry. We're getting closer and closer. All right, now at this point, the overall color scheme and the contrast, a lot of the details are pretty well set. But what I'm starting to think about is how to really take it to that next level and get it set up for the final layer, which will be an oil paint. So what I want to do is look for areas, uh, imperfections, things like around the moon. We've got some blotchy areas around the moon. I'd like to soften up some of those. It doesn't have to be a perfect transition. This is a hazy sky, so some of the clouds could add some variations in that. But I want it to be nice and smooth. I want it to be rich. I want to take this as far as I can with acrylics before I get to oils. Now, I also want to keep in mind that I don't want to start wasting time as a lot of this can be done with oil paints and we can actually end up taking more time by overdoing it with acrylics when we could really achieve the same result with oil paints much faster. But I do want to keep working at it. So I'm going to look for areas, just smoothing out some areas. I want to just expand that glow just a little bit, work on some of these clouds. And the process is going to be pretty much the exact same thing that I've been doing. So I'm going to start with some white. I am going to get some of that yellow. Of course, we've got some blue in there, and I'm adding just a little bit of the umber just to dull that back. I'm going to test this quick. Okay, that's pretty bright. More blue. A little bit more yellow. So I'm going to start to fine tune some of these spots. Now, as I use my finger to blend, I really want to keep that clean. So I'm going to dip my finger in water and I'm going to make sure I wipe that off so it's clean every time. But I do want to have some water in my finger as I keep doing this. Add a little bit more white to that. I'm just looking for any imperfections. A little bit lighter, blend it out. Dip my finger in some water, wipe it off, and repeat. So this is, if you've watched some of my videos in the past, this is kind of how I blend a lot of my skies using acrylic paint. It's a slow process, but it does save time in the long run. 
there's a sweet spot of time though where you can do this. Like I said, you get a great result, but if you can do it for too long, you kind of start wasting time. So I always have that in the back of my head. How far do I want to take it? Add some more blue. And umber, darken that down a bit. Start going further out, softening up some of those areas. So I'm gonna keep poking at that, doing this a little bit more. And I'll just kind of repeat that process along this area. But then I also wanna do something with these, these clouds, something with this area through here. I don't know if I wanna add some, some different types of clouds, maybe with some hard edges, I'm not quite sure. I'll probably switch my round blender brush here. But anyways, I'm just going to kind of go over some of these spots with a light wash of color. Start softening and just playing with a couple things. Just kind of see how it goes. I, I might want to add Now I can always change this, but there comes a point when I'm trying to decide if I if I want to add some different clouds, maybe some darker clouds, and whether that would be a good idea or whether I could even do that. So this area below the moon, it's really easy to change at this point. There's not a lot going on. If I screw something up, I can paint over the top and I can get the same effect that we have here pretty quickly. So there's a lot of room for error in this part. Not so much right up through here, but I could probably go for some things and see how they look before I'm really convinced whether it's the right thing to do or not. So let's add got a little bit of dry paint over the top of this. Let's add a little bit of quinacridone to this. Darken that even more. So this would be like some storm clouds in front. And I'm mixing up just a lighter color, a little bit of yellow. And I might even switch to a smaller filbert brush here, about a quarter inch wide. And I'm just going to see if this might work or not.
So I'll start out, these clouds might look a little bit rough. Because I don't want to spend too much time. I more or less just want to see if it's something I like or not. So I'll get the rough idea in here. That's not looking too bad. Might be kind of neat to have some clouds. Mix up some lighter color again here. About the color of those first clouds I added. Add some water to this. Create more of a haze. Train's coming by. I've always thought of painting a train in the mountains. Some really neat railroad tracks around here, kind of wind through the mountains. Another soft. Maybe an even softer cloud down here. Might just play with this. Some more water. Yeah, I think this might work. If I keep working at it and then create some of these dark clouds, then they'll get lighter and lighter and lighter as you get closer to the moon. It might create a lot of depth, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm just kind of establishing the highlights of where I might want some of these clouds. And I could even change the shape. Of some of the clouds I have up here. Add a little definition to them. By adding clouds, we can kind of hide imperfections that we have in this smooth area of the sky as well. So that's kind of neat. So now you can start to see some clouds building up. I do like that. So I'm going to continue with that as well. A little bit darker of a color. Kind of shade in these layers of clouds. See how that's just a bit darker here? So that's cool. So we're starting to create some layers. So I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to speed this up because I'm going to work on this and it's going to get pretty timely, a little bit too long. But the process is the exact same. I'm just going to try to smooth out this yeah, just slightly more and uh, might change up a little bit in the moon. But so far, we have a really nice painting coming along. I think at this point, a lot of you guys can manage to take it from here. 
I've got faith in you guys. There's nothing left to it. Just a matter of how far do you really want to take some of these blends. I could be happy with this right now, but I'd like to just keep poking at it and experimenting, just see what I can come up with. And then uh, I think I'll be ready for oils after that, and we'll slow it down and talk about it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you had any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to try and answer everybody that I can. And of course, remember, if you'd like to support my channel, please check out my free print giveaway, as well as my eBay auctions and website. I auction most all of the paintings I do here in the videos through my eBay, uh, except for this one, which is a Christmas gift to my brother. So bro, if you're watching, Merry Christmas. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.